are using Python and Pandas and you want to filter a data set by multiple conditions, well, you are in luck because in today's video, we're going to be going through five different approaches to achieving this, ranging from using a query to using lock as well as Boolean indexing. And all the code from this video will be linked down below in an article talking about each of these different approaches. So with this intro out of the way, let's start coding. All right, so let's jump right into the video. Let's import in pandas. So import pandas as PD. Um, we're gonna use NumPy a little bit later for one of the ways, but uh, we'll cover that in a second. So regardless, the first thing we should do is build out our data frame. And we're gonna say is df equals pd.dataframe. And we're gonna pass in a dictionary. So we do have this code down below on our article. So if you guys don't wanna type all of this out, I'm just gonna copy and paste it. So I save you guys a little bit of time, uh, but feel free to use whatever you want on here. So we have a user ID, right? Three digits for these user IDs, not really secure or anything like that. We have ages over here. We have hourly over here, and then we have FT team. Uh, so football team, Steelers, Seahawks, Falcons, Patriots, and Steelers once again. None of this really matters because we're just gonna be filtering from it, but that is the data we'll be using for this data frame. So we just run that over here. And uh, just to show you what this looks like as a data frame, let's go to here, df.head, I'm just putting 10. We don't really have that many records, but you can see over here, user ID, age, hourly, and team. And this is much cleaner now. Perfect. Okay. So what we're going to do, our first approach is going to be lock. So let me go over here and we're going to say using lock to filter multiple conditions. And let's take a look at how we would want to do that. So let's say, for example, we want to look where hourly is greater than 100, greater than or equal to 100, right? The age is less than age is going to be less than 60. And the team, so team starts with the letter S. Okay. Additionally, we're going to only use two columns. So we're only going to look at user ID and we're going to grab the football team. So FT team. So how would we approach that? So how we could do that is we go over here and we say data frame dot lock, which stands for location. And we'll have a full video on lock as well. Um, it's in my backlog right now, but I promise you we'll have that. So inside over here, we're going to have two brackets, right? And one of the things that's critical when you are looking at multiple conditions is to put everything in parentheses, right? So what we want to do is say DF, and we're going to look at the hourly column. So we're going to go over here, we'll put hour. Then we're going to say hourly is going to be greater than or equal to 100 on this side of things, okay? Now, we're looking at and on this side of things, right? We want all three of these to be true. So then what we're gonna do is put the and sign over here and we're gonna go for the next, right? So parentheses again, because as I mentioned, each thing that we're filtering on needs to be in parentheses. So now we need to look at age being less than 60. So DF, we grab age and we're gonna say that is less than 60, right? And I don't even have the parentheses around them. I probably accidentally deleted them. So we'll go over here, DF age, and we're gonna see that is less than 60. Great. Now let's look at our third condition. So our third condition, we're gonna have an and over here as well. And also it looks like my other bracket got deleted. So I just fixed that really quick. Uh, regardless, we're gonna have our third condition, right? So parentheses again, and we're gonna look at our DF and our football team, right? So this is gonna be FT team. And let me just double check. Yeah. So. FT like that, F team. And we want to see that the team starts with the letter S. So I'm just going to use string. So STR that starts with, starts with, and then just pass in the letter S like that. Okay, awesome. And now what I want to do is define the columns that I want to take a look at. So, and over here, we're going to put user ID, user ID. And then we're also going to put our football team. So FT team. And just like that, we have grabbed our data set, our data frame, right? And we got our user ID, football team. We have the user ID here and the team based off of the parameters. Hourly has to be greater than 100. Age has to be less than 60. 
and the team must start with s, and then we define the columns. Now, let's say you don't want to define the columns, right? Really easy. So you just go over here and remove all this. So the second parameter in lock is defining what columns you want to take a look at. So you can literally just put all this in here, right? And it's going to print out your data frame that has all these conditions, right? All the four columns over here, user ID, age, right? Our lead FT team. I'm just going to call this football team. And it prints all the columns. So if you want to use lock and you put a comma after it, it's going to say what columns, right? Now, one other thing we should probably mention is how does or statements work? So I showed you and, right? How does or work? Well, or in this instance, right, is just going to be a pipe. So we put pipe over here, and then we put a pipe on this side of things. So we're saying hourly has to be greater than 100, or age is less than 60, or football team starts with S, right? And it's essentially going to print out everything. So first, hourly, light, greater than 100, greater than equal to 100, right? So that grabs these three, right? So those are going to be shown over here. Age is less than 60. Well, everyone in the data set is under the age of 60. So since this condition is met, everything's going to show. Anyways, we could change this, right? We could say like, for example, 20, right? Let's see if that changes it. Yeah, it does. And you can see 20 has less, right? Obviously for our first example, we have 60 over there, but now we've changed it to 20 and we have a little bit of filtering. And then football team starts with S. So Steelers and Seahawks will show in this instance, right? Because it starts with an S, it starts with an S. So any of these have to be true. The or statement will populate it. So showed you and, I showed you or. I'm not going to show them on every specific example because it will be a little bit repetitive. So up next, we're going to use NumPy. So what we're going to do is import NumPy as NP. And you, uh, if you haven't been exposed to NumPy yet, well, welcome to NumPy. And it's a really important library for you to learn within data analytics, especially as you get exposed to the Python side of things. Now, this isn't my preferred way to filter down a data frame, but it is a good one to know pretty early on. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and say IDX equals NP dot where. And inside our where, essentially, we're going to paste in what we had over here, right? So we can go over here on this side of things, and we're just going to grab all of this, so grab everything that's inside, and we're going to populate it right there. Right now we have our IDX on here, and all we want to do is now go back to lock, so df.lock, and then just pass in our IDX. And take a look. Now it is filtered down. So it's in a little bit of an extra step, right? But we're finding the location, np.where, we pass in our parameters over here, we get IDX. And just to show you what IDX looks like, right? We can go over here and print out our IDX, right? And you can see it is an array, zero to five. And then inside over here, right, df.lock, we pass in IDX and uh, you can see it populates those, right? So we have row zero and then row five. And if row zero sounds a little bit confusing to you, that's because in Python, we start at zero, right? We don't start at one. So zero is one, and then five is essentially six. And if you go back to original data frame, right? Zero, this is our first row. And then five, this is our sixth row, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, right? And this is based off of indexing. So essentially, right, you can think of is row minus one, that is gonna be your index within your data frame. And maybe we'll cover indexing in another video if you guys want to see that. but Regardless, that's what we're taking a look at, right? So that's how we could use np.where with IDX. Again, it's not my preferred way of approach, but it is something that I think is pretty impactful to know. So what we're going to do next is using query. And this is one of the ways that I personally use. So we'll go over here and say, use pandas query. And let's jump right into it. So all we want to do is say df dot query and first we surround it with single quotes so what's really nice about query is it's a pretty readable so you can say hourly we don't even have to go above over here right and you see how we have our column over here for df hourly well we can just say df query and just have hourly like this right so we can say hourly is greater than or equal to 100 put and over here and age is less than 60 
And then we're gonna say, and we're gonna say ft team dot string that starts with, we'll pass in s and you'll notice one thing with this. So, and we'll get into values. So one thing I want to mention, right? So we go above over here, you see s, we have single quotes. Well, one of the issues is in query, right? Everything is surrounded by single quotes. So since we're dealing with strings, we have to put in a double quotes like this, right? So this will get us our results like that. And I just wanna show you as well, like what if we were just looking for stealers? So we can just go over here and say FT team, we can go over here and say is equal to, and you would just put double quotes like this and say stealers. Right, and it shows the same thing. So if you're dealing with strings, right, double quotes inside over here, because you will have issues if you put single quotes. So that is the one kind of quirk to query. But again, we put all this over here. What's nice also is you don't have to put the extra parentheses. So we go above, right, we have extra parentheses around each of these, which can be a little tedious when you are typing out a lot of things you want to filter. Whereas over here, right, it's pretty self self-explained, right? Our league hundred. Okay. And age less than 60 and football team Steelers. Like that's pretty, pretty readable in comparison to this over here. But let's go over one more example over here. Something that I use quite a bit, which is going to be based off of Boolean indexing. And personally, this is the method I use the most. So I'll say filter based off of Boolean indexing. And let's jump right into it. So this is actually quite easy, right? So we can go over here as we'll say data frame and we're gonna look inside our data frame, right? So inside over here, what we're gonna have is each of our specific conditions. So what I wanna do is since I don't wanna type all of this out again, to be honest with you guys, we're just gonna go over here and grab all this inside over here. I'm just gonna paste it, right? So again, we have the parentheses, everything inside, DF hourly, 100, age less than 60, team starts with S, right? This will print out your whole data frame. And if we want to go and take a look at the approach of, you know, maybe we only want to show three columns. We want to show user ID, we want to show age and hourly. Well, how do you do that? Well, here's how you do that. So at the very end, right, you want to go over here and we're going to put double brackets and then we're going to define each of these different columns. So we'll just grab all three of these over here. So we have user ID, comma, then we'll have age, comma, and then we have our, right? So now, because we define those at the very end, we have our data frame over here with user ID, age, and hourly. So again, just populate the columns that you want at the very end, which is a little different than lock. So when we did lock, right, I'm going over here, we just put a comma within lock and then define the columns, right? And this is only one bracket over here because it's defined inside. Whereas if you're using Boolean indexing, right, two, if you're grabbing multiple columns and it is on the outside, and if you wanna grab one column, right, it's only gonna be one bracket. So I can go over here. Let's say I just wanna grab the user IDs so I can go over here like this, and then we'll just say user ID. So user ID and check it out. So that's the one column over here, user ID. So multiple columns, two brackets, one column, one bracket when you're dealing with Boolean indexing. Uh, the other approach that we could use is eval. So eval with multiple conditions. And what's kind of cool about eval is it's very similar to our query which I showed you over here where it's very readable, right? Personally, I haven't really used eval, but it is an approach that you could take. And you can say a data frame like this, right? And then you would go inside over here and say df.eval and inside, right? We're gonna essentially paste what we had in our query. So I'll just go back up over here. We'll grab our query, right? And that's this over here. And I'll populate it. I'll actually replace these on that side of things. And take a look, we have our data frame just like that. And the same rules apply if you wanna grab stealers, right? Instead of just the starts with S, just go over here and go over here on this side of things, just grab that 
purple dot C. Okay. And check it out. So I hope you guys found this valuable. Let's just go through this approach one more time, right? We just created a data frame in the beginning, so nothing really too special. Then down below, right, we used lock. Now lock is probably the most popular method for doing this, so that's why it's up here at first, right? And remember, parentheses around each of the different ways you want to evaluate, it, right? So hourly, right? And then you put and, have this inside over here, and we have this inside over here, okay, all in parentheses. Super, super important when you're using either lock or you're using Boolean indexing, right? I showed you that over here. And these are probably the two most popular ways to do it. So make sure if you're looking at multiple conditions, you have the parentheses on there, right? And if you wanna use or, right, we use 8pi. Next, we looked at using numpy, right? You can just say np.where, get your IDX, and then you could just lock off of that IDX. We get all of this over here. Next, we have pandas query, which I personally do also like because it's super, super readable, right? This is way more readable, in my opinion, than some of the stuff up over here. But uh, regardless, it's not used as much, but if you wanna type something out pretty fast, right, and don't worry, we're about parentheses, you can use query. Uh, same thing with eval, right? You can just go down below with eval, essentially the same exact thing, except you have a data frame, and inside over here, you df.eval. So, a lot of different approaches that you guys could specifically take on this, right? But again, super, super important for most of them where you need to have these parentheses, otherwise it will not work. And also showed you how you can grab either one column or multiple columns. So like in this example for Boolean indexing, right? One column, one bracket, this one, two columns versus where we use lock at the very end, just put a comma. Uh, that's our second parameter is what columns we wanna specifically take a look. Thanks guys for checking out this video on pandas filtering. And if you found it valuable, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We actually have quite a few pandas videos here already. So I'm gonna link a few down below in the description. And we also have a pandas playlist right here, also open to recommendations. So if you want any other videos, feel free to leave a comment and we may make a video in the future.